is concerned with few things, and they are mostly about the temple worship. So, Malachi, about the temple. And temple, I should have read it, okay. Second temple, because we are after exile. People came back. Okay, they began to build a temple by Malachi. They finished it, but there are some issues in the temple. And the first issue in the temple is behavior of priests. Okay? And then there are some financial or monetary, let's say financial, financial issues. <laughs> what? Nothing new, yeah? That's right. You know, just, see, see, that's why the Bible is, you know, eternal book in the sense that it addresses the issues that always existed. Nothing really, you know, nothing really surprising. But in the middle of his book, what, he's, what he tells is, is very interesting. In chapter 3, the passage that we have, we have two, we have an important thing. Behold, okay, says God. I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. So we have two people here. Okay? One is the messenger, is the one who brings the message. And actually, the messenger, or angel, that's what Malachi is for. Malach is angel. I, or E, actually, Ma. So in, in Hebrew, it will be Malki, okay? So it's, uh, it's the, the mess, my messenger. So E would say for mine, okay? So there is a messenger, and then there is a Lord. And that's what we find in the Gospel of Luke in chapter 3, the reading that we have for today, for the Gospel reading. Uh, we will talk about this during the worship service. But just for now, for one second, please go there. Okay, in appointed, so Luke chapter 3, in appointed time, we have 15th year of Tiberius, uh, Caesar, and Pontius Pilate, and a bunch of other names, so we have a real geography, we have a real time, the real guy, not some kind of abstract teaching, it's the real guy, John the Baptizer, he comes and begins to prepare people for the way, and then we do not have it in our reading, but then Jesus comes, Verse 21, and then all the people were baptized, and when Jesus was also have been baptized, and heaven's been opened, and so on and so forth. Okay? So we have those two characters which are very important. It's the messenger of God, and then Lord Himself. So let's go back. And this messenger of God who will prepare the way before me is kind of reflection. That's why you need to. Somewhat keep in mind our historical line and the, the book's line. So if we will go back, let's jump for one second into Exodus 23. In Exodus 23 verse 20, that's what Lord promises... That's what Lord tells after giving of the law to Moses, the first, first portion of the law. He says, Behold, I will send an angel before you to guard you on your way. Okay? Uh, this is one of the examples where you have to be very careful when you use books which are called concordances. Okay? That's usually the big fat books where if you know the word... Uh, from the Bible, you can see where it appears in different places in the Bible, okay? But the problem is that in Malachi, you have a word messenger, and in Exodus, you have a word angel, but in Hebrew, it's the same word. So the problem with those books, it, it's good and helpful, but you need to be very careful because sometimes the same Hebrew word translated with different English words, and sometimes, same English word it represents actually different Hebrew words. They just use that for whatever 
reason. Okay? So, we have a promise that along with God who will protect, there will be an angel or messenger, the one who will uh, give uh, the word of God to the people and mostly, mostly to will communicate with leader. So, two things, messenger on one hand and the Lord on the other hand who will suddenly come to his temple. And this suddenly idea that the, the idea that the Lord himself will come suddenly into his temple is very well picked up in the New Testament. Whenever Jesus comes to the temple, he is not recognized as the Lord. At best, people question him, aren't you the Christ? But usually they do not understand who is he, what kind of authority he has. Beginning from, the, from his childhood, remember, Jesus stays behind after his parents depart after another Passover, okay? He stays in the temple, and his parents come back and says, well, child, what have you done with us? You know, we, we know all of this story. You know, it's, it's in the uh, Gospel of Luke uh, in chapter 2. And he says, I'm in my father's house. I mean, kind of like, I I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, so why were you nervous? But yeah. Yes. Um, so in Malachi, is the Lord Jesus? Uh, yes and no. I would try to stay away from the name Jesus. It's the same second person of the Trinity that we have incarnate as Jesus. Okay? Jesus is a historical figure. Okay? That was born out of the Holy Spirit and Mary. Okay, then the, the second person of the Trinity is a, appeared to us as Jesus. Okay, here we have the Lord. So that's a promise with not really dedicated name. Okay. And would the messenger be, be John the Baptist? Yes, that's what, yeah, I, I would think so. Yeah, so that's the one who comes to prepare the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that the same uh, as in Exodus 23? That's supposed to be John the Baptist too? Yes and no. Okay? <laughs> because, okay. Now, let's talk about some of the... <laughs> okay. okay. When we have a phrase, so we, okay. Exodus. Okay? 23. What we have is actually Right after, in 24, Moses, not argues, but kind of bargains with, with, with God. And in, not, I'm sorry, not in 24. Uh, in, in 33, after the golden calf. And that's where he is placed in the cave. And God passes by. And Moses says, I'm not going to leave these people unless you will go with me. So he presents himself as the messenger. Here... So what we have very often is multiple fulfillments of the same idea. Okay? So what we have is Lord took upon himself to be the messenger. Then he promises the same idea of messenger in Malachi. And then we have a pair of John the baptizer and Jesus. Okay? And... What happens after is actually, if you read very carefully, in New Testament, we often have people who travel in pairs. So one is kind of like the main guy. Sometimes it's Peter, sometimes it's Paul. And there is another one kind of like a supportive role. I don't know. I don't want to make a too big deal out of that. Kind of like a wingman, you know. <laughs> Somewhat like that, you know. And in our, you know... Even in our situation, you know, that's kind of biblical support for why do we have a pastor and elder together serving communion. Okay, we have uh, that, that, that mutual uh, and important uh, double testimony from both of them. Okay, so when we read those texts, uh, it's just interesting to see the parallels. So in Exodus... First fulfillment of what was promised here, uh, we find in about 10 chapters after. But the same idea, same paradigm, if you want, same pattern of Lord and the messenger is, is driven further. 
Okay? So now, verse 2. But who can endure the days of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? And the reason is, for he'll be like a refiner fire and a fuller soap, and he will sit as a refiner and purifier of the silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Okay, why do we have a special attention to the sons of Levi? As I said, you know, that, that's the serious, serious, uh, important, this is a, a question of importance for Malachi. He deals with priesthood. He deals with the sons of Levi. They were the sons of Levi. So that's why he talks about that. Uh, people discuss why really, I mean, yeah, we know that this is an important question, but it kind of doesn't explain why. So um, some people say he was the priest and he did not like what happened with him. Uh, I think the main idea is uh, the transformation of the world or um, beautification of the world, let's put it even this way, begins, should begin with the sanctuary, with the church. If the church will not have witness, you know, then people will not know what, what is right and what is wrong. Okay? So that's why in Malachi we have a new start, new period of time after the exile. And he wanted to make sure, God wanted to make sure through his words, through the prophet Malachi, that the priest would know and do and be responsible uh, with their duties. So he wants to purify them as silver and gold. Uh, I'm not really into metallurgical stuff. I uh, don't know much about that, how you do, how you deal with, uh, with metals. But as far as I know, that's somewhat uh, long and serious process, you know, because when, the, when, when people take a raw metal out of the ground, uh, what do they do? You know, they melt it and there is some bad stuff, you know, floats on the top. They kind of somehow, you know, technologically, they take it out, then remelt it again, you know, and so on and so forth. So it takes stages to purify both silver and gold, you know. And then finally, you do not have any, um, you know, bad, bad par particles, you know, and you have, you know, 99% gold. Yes. You want to say something? I was something? just saying impurities is what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that so we we cannot dig the right. I mean, we cannot dig the pure gold and silver out of the ground unless somebody else, you know, already put it in blocks, and you know that. But you know, that means somebody else did a good job. Okay. So then, verse uh, four. The offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and in the former years. Okay, now, so we have two powers, and uh, they are not as separate as in our today, uh, in, our, in our current life. So we have sons of Levi, who are the priests, uh, who are the sons of Judah and, and Jerusalem. Yeah, the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem. Okay? We need to understand that after exile, we do not have Israel as a country. Within the Persian and then Greek and then Roman Empire, we have the country uh, of Judah. Okay? So everybody, regardless of their tribal uh, connection, were, could be called Judahites. Okay? So the, 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 the people who live in Judea. Okay? does not mean that they are from the tribe of Judah, okay? It's like Americans, okay? All of us are Americans, but some have Irish background, some have German background, some have Russian background, some have these, and Mexican background, some have, I don't know, Kenyan background, whatever, okay? So after exile, the term Judah uh, does not necessarily mean uh, the, uh, that the person is from the tribe of Judah. I can give you a couple examples, but you know, for lack of time, I will give you one example. Very simple. Um, let me, let's go to the book of Esther. So, book of Esther is written 
about the same period of time, but Esther is in Persia. Okay, so she became the queen for the ruler, and actually the good ruler who supported reconstruction of the temple. So in Book of Esther, in chapter 2 and 3, we first time meet a very important character for the whole book. And his name is, what's his name? Who knows? Hmm? His name is Mordecai. Yep. Okay? So the guy is Mordecai. Uh, now, very careful. In chapter 2, verse 5. Now, he was a Jew in Susa, in Citadel, whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, son of Shimei, son of Kish, a Benjamite. Okay, so we have two terms. On one hand, he was a Jew. That means he was from Judah. Okay, he was captured from the country of Judea under Nebuchadnezzar. On the other hand, he was from what tribe? He was a Benjamite. Okay, so he had no, he had relate, blood relations to Jacob, but he was not from the tribe of Judah. Okay, so that, that's an important thing. That's just one of the examples. Okay, so let's go back to Malachi. So we have two powers. We have a priestly power, or temple power, power, and we have a civil power. So we have sons of Levi, and we have sons of Judah. The thing is, uh, in those days, they were not as separated as, as today, okay? In our days, uh, that's what we usually hear, that uh, there is a separation between church and state. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's just the, I'm not going to say even is it good or bad. It's just the way we live, okay? Uh, the only thing I want you to understand right, uh, with the separation of the church and state, uh, sometimes we hear that the church has no right to uh, say anything about what the government does or critique what the government does and so on and so forth. Actually, it's vice versa. You know, when people, the pilgrims came here, they ran from the civil, uh, from their civil government in UK. So what they wanted to do is uh, maintain that their right to do what they believe is correct and they can influence the government. So we just need to be very careful with that and uh, stay wherever we are. So verse 5. Then I will draw near to you for judgment, and I will sweep witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swore falsely, against those who oppress the hired worker in his wages, the widow uh, and fatherless, and against those who trust the uh, who th I'm sorry thrust aside the sojourner, and do not uh, and do not fear me, says the Lord of Hosts. Okay, again the phrase the Lord of Hosts is important because it's actually the Lord of armies. Okay, It's not only the Lord of multitudes, it's not the Lord of big group of people or angels, it's the, the Lord of the, uh, we, we, as I said, you know, Lord of armies. And he has um, cases against uh, one, two, uh, uh, four, I think four group of people. So against sorcerers, adulterers, against those who swore falsely, uh, no, five, sorry, against, yeah, sorcerers, adulterers, those who swear falsely, and against who oppress the hired worker, the uh, widow, and the fatherless, and against those who trust the sojourner. So basically, it's the people who are against God's law, uh, uh, which is reflected in the different areas of life. You know, for example, the widow uh, is the person who kind of can rely on either her kids support or if she for uh, unfortunate reasons uh, became a widow with no children so she has the only means of support if somebody will uh, give mercy to her so we'll be able to support her in one way or another and uh, since she would not be represented most of the times in courts or she would not be represented as uh, financially supported uh, people would, I mean, the bad judges would have inclination to rule against her. Or the last one, it's very interesting. I, I am the Lord of hosts is against those who uh, has who makes 
problems for sojourn. Okay, the sojourn is an interesting term. That's the term for the people who want to live in Israel, but would not necessarily have to become Jews in the full sense. They would not have to go through the circumcision, uh, but yet <laughs> they would live in the land, obey some of the rules of the land, uh, and celebrate about half of the feasts that uh, are prescribed to Israelites. The only real feast they would not be able to go to is, uh, is the Passover. Because to, to be present at the Passover table, you have to be circumcised. Other ones, like Pentecost, like uh, Sukkot, uh, Israelites are actually encouraged to invite the sojourners in, uh, to their homes and to their tables. Okay, so questions or comments?